Methods are one of the most fundamentally important things in C-sharp. Between classes and methods, they will form a huge amount of your code. It's very important that you understand methods, and even though we've only covered the very basics of methods, you should make sure you've understood what's been taught so far. As always, a good foundation and starting point is the best way to learn and progress. So let's test your knowledge on methods so far and see how well you do. Okay, so I hope you all paid attention during the lesson. Let's see how you do in this test. So the first question is, is console.writeLine high a method? Now look at it closely. You got the option of yes or no. And let me know what you think. I'm hoping you all get this one right. You should have been paying attention in all lessons and this one should be easy. And the answer is of course, no. This is a statement. This statement calls the method right line, but this is not a method itself. I'm hoping you all got that right and that nobody slipped up. If so, go back to the statements and basic syntax lesson where we teach that all statements end in a semicolon. That's a big giveaway. Next up, what are the public and private keywords called? Are they access tokens, access modifiers, or method access? These are the things at the start of the method when we declare a method, and you can specify various things, public, private, static, and the answer is access modifiers. Part of the method signature, the thing that makes up the method, begins with the access modifiers, which set the method's ability to be accessed by others. This is called the access modifiers. We covered this at the start of the lesson. So again, I hope you all got this one right. Next up, what is the default access modifier if not specified? Again, this was mentioned, and this is something you should remember. You've got the choice of public, private, or static. Let me know what you think, and let's go for 100% on this one. And the answer is private. When nothing is specified, as in public, private, internal, sealed, various other access modifiers, with the exception of static, which can be included as well, then the default is always private. When we see the main function that has just got static, but doesn't contain public, private, sealed, or internal, then the default is always private. As I mentioned, I always like to include the access modifier to be explicit about our intent so that we haven't simply forgot to specify a modifier. So hopefully you are all doing good on this so far. We are still aiming for that 100% results in the super chat. We have yet to get an entire 100% across the board test so far. That is our goal. Let's move on to the next question. Can classes outside of the method's own class call private methods? So this means if we declare a private method in a class, can another class outside of that one call our private method? Now I'm hoping you get this one right. It was mentioned. We haven't done classes yet, but you should have enough knowledge to answer this one. And the answer is no. When you mark a method as private, you are specifying that nowhere outside of the place it is defined, the scope, typically a class, can call this method and access it. There are ways around this using reflection and various other techniques, but as a whole and in general, the point of marking something as private is to prevent anything outside of its code scope accessing the method. Next up, what is the special keyword for returning nothing? Is it nothing, null, or void? Now this is the keyword used when declaring a method and specifying a return type. And the answer is void. Nothing is what we simply say. We are returning nothing. There is nothing to return. Null, we will cover in a future lesson. It's a special type meaning nothing. But when we are returning nothing, the keyword is void. Now let's check those who pay close attention. 
What is the preferred naming convention for method names? Is it camel case, pascal case, or kebab case? I mentioned this and I purposely haven't written the cases in the style in the answer, otherwise it might give it away. And the answer is Pascal case. Pascal case is how you see it in the answer with the exception of the space between the words. It would be if you close the words together and every word starts with a capital. That is the preferred way to name methods in C-sharp. Next up, what are the variables in a method signature called? Are they variables, arguments, or parameters? This in our example was the string full name. It's the pieces of variable information that can go into a method. What do we call those variables? And the answer is parameters. Now this one you need to be very careful of because this is three names that are very similar that all mean almost the same thing. It's not super important that you know this, but it is important to try and get it right. Variables, as we have seen and as you have learned, store types of information and are accessed by a name, such as string full name equals a name. If you declared that as a statement, then the full name would be the variable. Parameters are in the method signature defining what variables the method would like to be given. So parameters are effectively telling the caller what variables it would like. Arguments are when we pass in variables into the method. So all three are very closely related and it's important to try and get the distinction right. But don't worry too much if you don't. If you say the method variables or the method arguments or the method parameters, most developers will understand you. But technically, the method parameters are defined in the method signature when you are writing the method itself. The method arguments are the names of the variables you then pass into the argument. In our example, console.write line hello world, the hello world string literal we passed in is an argument. It in itself is a string literal and could be a variable. But when we pass the variable into a method, it can be called an argument, an argument of the method. So again, not super important, but good knowledge if you try to remember. Next up, just because we haven't covered this explicitly, what are these symbols called? Are they brackets, braces, or parentheses? Now again, I talk about this when I am writing code but I don't believe we've explicitly done a test on it. Hopefully you will all get this one right. And the answer is parentheses. Next up, what symbol do we use to separate parameters of a method? So when we want to pass in multiple parameters of a method, what do we use? Is it a full stop, curly braces, or a comma? Think on this one and let me know your answer. And the answer is a comma. So the curly braces are typical when opening code blocks. The full stop or period is typical when accessing something inside of a class, for example. And the comma is used in methods of, of many places to separate parameters. Second to last question now. What is the preferred naming convention for method parameters? So this is the name such as string full name. Is it camel case, pascal case, or kebab case? And we've been doing this throughout all the lessons naturally when we are creating variables and parameters. And the answer is camel case. So camel case is where you start the first word with a lowercase and then every subsequent word with an uppercase starting character. So it's exactly the same as Pascal case, except the first word is lowercase. And the last question now, what is a benefit of methods? Is it to self-contain units of reusable code, to reduce repetitive code, or to make code easier to read? 
So this is the benefits of using methods. There are many, but which one of these is a benefit of using methods? And the answer is all three. In this case, as well as many other benefits, all these three benefits are from using methods. Methods help us reduce our code into smaller chunks. They help us test easier. They help us to reduce repetitive code by replacing the variable pieces of information in a chunk of code with parameters, and then the rest of the code can stay the same. And obviously to self-contain the, the blocks of code into nice areas, chunks, and named methods. It's all about keeping code simple and small and understandable in chunks we can reuse. So hopefully you enjoyed that test and you scored highly. Anything less than 100%, and I would advise going back and watching the lesson. The idea of these tests is to prove that you have fully understood the lesson. And unlike some tests where we are happy with 80%, 90%, I highly recommend you aim for 100% on all these tests in your own time before moving on.